From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN New News. And good afternoon. Thanks for joining us on your MTN statewide news on this Tuesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. President-elect Joe Biden will join more members of his team and include more historic firsts. This comes as a controversial member of President Trump's coronavirus team announces his resignation. Natalie Brand has more details from the White House. President-elect Joe Biden is introducing key members of his economic team today, starting with former Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen as Treasury Secretary. When it comes to bank regulation and supervision, one size does not fit all. If confirmed, she will be the first woman to hold the position. In a tweet Monday, Yellen said we must restore the American dream and says as Treasury Secretary, she will work every day towards rebuilding that dream for all. Several of the president-elect's other picks are also making history, including Cecilia Rouse, who would be the first woman of color to chair the White House Council of Economic Advisors. The president-elect's choice to head the Office of Management and Budget near Tandon is already receiving pushback from GOP senators who accuse her of being partisan. She's going to be uh, radioactive. Tandon, who heads the left-leaning think tank Center for American Progress, is an outspoken critic of the GOP. Whether some of these picks are confirmed largely depends on who controls the Senate, which will be decided following two runoff elections in Georgia in January. While the president-elect continues to build his team, a controversial special advisor to President Trump is leaving his position. Dr. Scott Atlas, the president's coronavirus advisor who criticized lockdown restrictions and downplayed the need to wear masks, announced he resigned. His term was set to expire at the end of the week. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. And in his resignation letter, Dr. Atlas said he'd work with a singular focus to save lives and help Americans through this pandemic. The CDC is expected to vote on a vaccine priority for how to distribute the first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. These vaccines are set to come from Pfizer and Moderna. Both companies are awaiting approval from the FDA for emergency use authorization. Today's meeting will be hosted in Atlanta, Georgia and open to the public. And you can watch it live through a webcast link at CDC.org or gov, I should say. And it starts at 2 p.m. That's Eastern time. As Congress comes back into session, it remains unclear whether another pandemic relief bill is in the works. And both of Montana's senators, Republican Steve Daines and Democrat John Tester, say they'd like to see a bill passed. Daines says he's introduced a bill to forgive prior loans to small businesses or offer relief to businesses with fewer than 50 employees. And he says he'd like to see them passed or incorporated in a larger bill. His office also says Democratic leaders in Congress have rejected earlier efforts to compromise. Tester says negative impacts from the pandemic are getting worse and a substantial aid package is needed now. We could get a, a bill out that have a trillion and a quarter, tr between a trillion and a quarter and trillion and three quarters in it that's very, very targeted. I think it would do a lot of good for the economy. If we want to let these businesses fall through the cracks, if we want to let local governments default, I think that's really, really bad practice, and it isn't good for, for our long-term economic health. Otester also says he believes President-elect Joe Biden is supportive of a COVID relief package. Well, today there are nearly 957 new confirmed COVID-19 cases reported in Montana. That's total now in the state of over 63,000. Well, this morning, Governor Steve Bullock announced a new crisis counseling hotline now available. And the hotline is to aid Montanans struggling with mental health during the ongoing impacts of COVID-19. If you are in need of crisis counseling, there's a number you can call. It's 1-877-503-503. 0833 Monday through Friday that hotline is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. A Flathead County's health officer, the interim one, says she is resigning when her contract expires at the end of December. Tamily Robinson has also resigned from her position on the Flathead County Health Board, which she temporarily vacated to serve as public health officer, and she says she faced challenges passing public health orders when the Flathead County Health Board twice voted against the health department's recommendations to limit indoor event sizes to under 500 people. She says the health department is in the process of finding a permanent health officer with plans to make a formal announcement 
in the near future. All right, we're taking a break from the news to check in on the weather statewide. Here's a look now with Ed. Hey. Yeah, we've got snow that's been moving across the area, Andrea. As we take a look with the Doppler radar, over the last 24 hours, the sweep has basically moved from western Montana into the central portion of the state, picking up some steam this morning, and then pushing across the eastern plains and producing some wind along with it. And while it's the first taste of winter here, as we start looking at what's well, the beginning of the winter season as far as the weather goes on the first day of December, it's the ski slopes that have been hurting somewhat. In fact, we've only got modest amounts of snow, a big sky and red lodge that are open. Bridger Bowl says they're going to wait a little bit longer and showdown says December 11th is their opening date. We'll take a closer look at the forecast details coming up. Arizona and Wisconsin both certified their 2020 election results. Both battleground states declared President-elect Joe Biden the winner. In Wisconsin, he beat President Trump by roughly 20,000 votes. In Arizona, Biden's margin of victory was even more narrow, with just over 10,000 ballots separating the two candidates. The president has yet to concede the race. Montana's election results were officially certified by the Secretary of State. That happened this week in the state canvassing board meeting in Helena to compare state and county voting records to make sure that all votes are accounted for. That's the final step in making the results official. No changes were made to the projected outcomes of major state or federal races in Montana. Well, due to COVID-19, the Helena Symphony canceled their Christmas in the Cathedral concert scheduled for what would have been Monday, December 7th. Maestro Alan Scott says with the increase in cases and the amount of asymptomatic spread in the community, the risks were just too great. So the plan is to return to a digital concert in January if the vaccines roll out as they should expect it to be. And the blowout symphony under the stars, that's in July. A generous donation matched every donation of up to $20,000, and that has been in the process of being raised all the way through the month of December, which ends the 20th. Giving Tuesday is today, and with the pandemic disrupting most fundraising efforts, this year's Day of Giving probably even more important. Giving Tuesday started in 2012. It encourages people to give to their favorite organization in need of some assistance. And there are plenty of organizations across the state that you could support. They range from monetary donations, donating specific items, or volunteering your time. This year, there is an extra incentive on Giving Tuesday as the CARES Act lets you deduct around $300 of a donation to qualifying charities from your 2021 taxes. All right, so December is finally here. That means it really is now the time to buckle down and look for that perfect Christmas tree. Finding a tree on the National Forest Service land is easier than ever. Unlike years past, that's because Christmas tree permits are free of charge and they can be obtained from your local ranger station or online at recreation.gov. Online permits do require a 250 fee. That's $2.50. And each permit allows one household to cut a, cut a tree on the National Forest that's under 12 feet, less than 6 inches in diameter. All right, so coming up next on this Tuesday, it's a perfect story, a perfect story that offers a relaxing place to visit. You might even leave with a new feline friend. Can't wait to tell you about this. But first, Ed is going to be up next with a look at that statewide weather forecast.